If you enjoy this video, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like what you see on my channel and would like to support me on Patreon, click on the link below. The Six Million Dollar Man was one of the coolest shows on television during the 1970s. Every kid wished they had a bionic body and could be astronaut Steve Austin. In fact, I still want a robotic body like Steve Austin's. I actually discovered The Six Million Dollar Man in the late 70s. I was seven years old. I loved it and thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen on TV. And toys would never be the same again when they released a whole toy line. Six Million Dollar Man, ready to operate and command. Colonel Steve Austin is the Six Million Dollar Man. Complete with the technology to replace his bionic modules. Check him out with the bionic transport and repair station. Control his amazing lifting strength. See through his wide angle bionic eye. You've got to remember, this was before Star Wars would bring merchandising to a whole new level. But it would be the Six Million Dollar Man that would be one of the first. And when I found out there was a Steve Austin doll, I was ecstatic. I really wanted that doll, and I got it, after some older kid gave it to me. Unfortunately, I lost that doll, but happily I have since found the doll on eBay, and the doll is standing in my glass cabinet of collectible dolls and figures. The series was simply about astronaut Colonel Steve Austin, played by Lee Majors, who is badly injured in an experimental aircraft which crashes. He is rebuilt and given bionic implants for six million dollars, including new bionic arms and legs and a bionic eye and turned into the world's first bionic man. Actor Lee Majors, who played Steve Austin during this time, became a pop culture icon and Majors even married sex symbol Farrah Fawcett. The Six Million Dollar Man was in fact based on Martin Caden's novel titled Cyborg, which was a bestseller and was published in 1972. Steve Austin was the lead character. Caden based the character of Steve Austin loosely on astronauts David Scott and Eugene Kernan. He followed the book up with three sequels, Operation Nuke, High Crystal, and Cyborg 4. ABC got the story rights from Caden, and in March of 1973, Cyborg was loosely adapted as a made-for-TV movie titled The Six Million Dollar Man, starring Lee Majors as Steve Austin. Originally, actor Monty Markham was considered for the role of Austin. Incidentally, Monty Markham in the series portrayed the Seven Million Dollar Man alongside Lee Majors in an epic fight climax. Markham's character's name was changed from Barney Miller to Barney Hiller after the television police comedy Barney Miller became popular. The TV movie was then re-edited for the later series and was retitled The Moon and the Desert Parts 1 and 2. This adaptation was done by writer Howard Rodman, working under the pseudonym of Henry Simeon. Caden's plot was modified and they made Austin a civilian astronaut. Missing were the standard features of the later series, the electronic sound effects, the slow motion running, and the character of Oscar Goldman. Instead, another character named Oliver Spencer, played by Darren McGavin, was Austin's supervisor of an organization here called the OSO, which in the novels, stood for Office of Special Operations. The lead scientist involved in implanting Austin's bionic hardware, Dr. Rudy Wells, was played in the pilot by Martin Balsam, then on an occasional basis in the series by Alan Oppenheimer, and finally as a series regular by Martin E. Brooks. Austin did not use the enhanced capabilities of his bionic eye in the first TV movie. To maintain the show's believability, producer Kenneth Johnson limited Steve Austin's abilities. Steve's capabilities are a bionic left eye, a bionic right arm, and bionic legs. The first movie was a major rating success, and it was followed by two made-for-TV movies in October and November of 1973, as part of ABC's rotating Movie of the Week series. The first was titled The Six Million Dollar Man, Wine, Women and War. And the second was titled The Six Million Dollar Man, The Solid Gold Kidnapping. The first of these two bore strong resemblances to Caden's second cyborg novel, Operation Nuke. 
The second was an original story. This was followed in January of 1974 by the debut of The Six Million Dollar Man as a weekly, hour-long series. The last two movies produced by Glenn A. Larson notably introduced a James Bond flavour to the series and reinstated Austin's status from the novels as an Air Force colonel. The hour-long series, produced by Harv Bennett, took out the James Bond style and portrayed a more down-to-earth Steve Austin. Lee Majors said of Austin, He hates the whole idea of spying. He finds it repugnant, degrading. If he's a James Bond, he's the most reluctant one we've ever had. The show was hugely popular during its run, and the show's opening phrase, Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Voiced by actor Richard Anderson, became a familiar pop culture catchphrase of the 70s. Originally, producer Harv Bennett voiced the opening of the show that said, Steve Austin, a man barely alive. For some reason, Anderson was not available to record the edition, so Bennett did it himself. Added to the series were slow motion action sequences. The electronic sound effects and the bionic eye sound effects. The slow motion action sequences were originally referred as the Kung Fu slow motion. According to Lee Majors, he did 90% of his own stunts in almost every episode. In the first two seasons of The Six Million Dollar Man, one of Steve's commonly explained covers for his bionic eye ability is that he eats a lot of carrots. In many episodes, Oscar's way of showing shock or surprise to a situation was to quickly remove his glasses and stare in disbelief. When the Six Million Dollar Man was broadcast in Israel, it was called The Man Who Is Worth Millions. This was due to the fact that in Israel, the number six million is associated with the Holocaust. The show had such an effect on kids that some kids were deliberately trying to seriously injure themselves in the hopes of getting bionic parts. This led to producers and Lee Majors to write a letter to at least one child to tell him that the show is purely fictional. During the series, there was two of the most successful episodes in TV history. The episode, The Secret of Bigfoot, parts one and two, which featured wrestler Andre the Giant as Bigfoot. Most memorable, and I would have to say, I, I, get, I get this a lot from people who I uh, run into on the street, uh, is, is the Bigfoot episodes. And I'm not sure he exists, but, uh, he exists for me in a, in a very big man, a very giant of a man named Andre the Giant. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how tall he was, but I know it was seven foot five or six. And, and I remember the first day that we uh, worked, I had, a, I had a fight scene in the woods with Bigfoot. And uh, we're, f we're fighting, and I remember he picks me up and he throws me, I don't know, it seemed like forever. And I landed, and he's supposed to come and run and dive on top of me. And I'm, and I'm thinking I'm going to get crushed. I'm going to get crushed here. I see him coming, and then all of a sudden it gets dark. It's the cloud. It's the shadow of Bigfoot coming down on me. And I'm, I'm holding my breath. And he hits the ground, and I'm thinking he, he, he didn't even touch me. And it was so amazing. And then I realized, well, you know, the guy was a, a champion. Uh, world champion wrestler. But anyway, Andre uh, was such a sweet man. He was a gentle man. He was just, it was just one of my favorite episodes. Lee Majors changed Austin's look by growing a mustache. This proved to be unpopular and the idea was dropped, but not before several commercial tie-ins, including a comic book and a lunchbox had been produced with the new look. In the spring of 1977, before production began on what would be the show's final season, Lee Majors refused to go to work until contract demands were met. At one point, it was reported that producers even considered replacing Lee Majors. Actors they considered were Gil Gerard, Bruce Jenner, yes, now Caitlyn Jenner, and Harrison Ford, who the producers actually said was unsuitable as an action hero. Can you believe that? 
Because of the show's success, they planned to make a spin-off series in 1975 and introduce a new character, Jamie Summers, played by actress Lindsay Wagner. The two-part episode of The Six Million Dollar Man was titled The Bionic Woman and was written for television by Kenneth Johnson. The character Jamie Summers was introduced as a professional tennis player who rekindled an old romance with Steve Austin, only to experience a parachuting accident that resulted in her being given bionic parts, similar to Austin. The character was very popular. Originally, Jamie was going to die after rejecting the bionic implants. She is saved by an experimental cryogenic procedure and was given her own spin-off series titled The Bionic Woman. The spin-off ran until 1978. The success of The Six Million Dollar Man and the spin-off The Bionic Woman was a turning point for network television that it convinced Hollywood that the superhero fantasy genre was a viable primetime entertainment material. This led to other superhero series and films based on comic book superheroes. Two clear examples of this was the Incredible Hulk TV series and the 1978 Superman movie. The Six Million Dollar Man ran for five seasons from January the 18th, 1974 to September the 11th. 1977. In later years, Lee Majors and Lindsay Wagner would return in three made-for-television movies, The Return of the Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman in 1987, and Bionic Showdown, The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman in 1989, which featured then-unknown actress Sandra Bullock in an early role as the new Bionic Woman, and the third TV movie, Bionic Ever After in 1994, in which Austin and Summers finally marry. These three TV movies also featured actors Richard Anderson and Martin E. Brooks. All three movies featured Major's son, Lee Majors II, as OSI agent Jim Castilian. The first two movies were written to create Bionic characters in their own series, but nothing ever came of it. The Bionic Woman was rebooted in 2007 with a new actress, but that show was cancelled. There is even a plan to make The Six Million Dollar Man into a feature film starring Mark Warburg. I even heard rumours way back in the 90s that Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to play Steve Austin. The Six Million Dollar Man was a massive show and I'm sure has influenced many films and I think there is even some inspiration from the show in the Terminator films. The T-1000 was a cyborg, and so is Steve Austin. The Six Million Dollar Man was just one of those 70s shows that made a huge impact into popular culture and into the television landscape. I have recently revisited the show, and yes, it's a little dated, but still enjoyable and nostalgic to watch. What can I say? I'm just a big kid who's trapped in the past. My name's Jonathan Bark. Thanks for watching.